Today, we are going to talk about the concern about the quality gap of learning during the pandemic. Is this a strategic approach to empower families to play, teach, and observe at home? We have a great number of audience and, uh, and the panelists to share the best practices and resources and stories from Learning Genie users today. And I hope you find this helpful. Okay. First of all, I'd like to start this webinar with a big thank you. Thank you all for all you do. 2020 has been really challenging, but you have prevailed with courage dignity and resilience. This is the last month of 2020. Um, 2021 will be strong, it will be better because we're stronger together. Thank you so much. You're our hero and inspiration. And I'd like to share with you some of these uh, social media posts and uh, from our users across the country uh, ever since the pandemic started back in March and how learning, how users are utilizing Learning Genie um, to support distance learning and uh, uh, communication with families, collection of data. And uh, our users get really creative to, sh um, to utilize Learning Genie in different ways that beyond our imagination and uh, we are collecting the best practices and hope to share with all of you and the, with the community to, um, uh, to improve together. And uh, today, actually, we have an uh, amazing um, panelist that will talk about the topic. And we have Angelica from Long Beach City College. Angelica, would you mind waving to the audience? <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and we have Liz from Lindsay Unified. Liz, please wave to the audience. Show your face. Hello. Thank you so much. And we have Cho from SATA Head Start. Oh, Hi. Thank you. And we have Jennifer from Sacramento City Unified School District. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Okay, and we also have our Learning Genie team member. We have Morgan uh, in our partnership team. She will be providing a um, quick overview of what's new in Learning Genie in regards to this topic. And we also have uh, Jerry, and um, she's She's going to be moderating the panel discussion, and Jerry is also the one who put together um, this webinar series with a lot of hard work. And I hope this is you will find this helpful for you. And myself, I'm Lala Jia. I'm the co-founder of Learning Genie. And thank you so much for joining us. And before we start, actually, I want to. Um, uh, discuss a couple of things, just one um, a certificate will be sent it to you within 48 to 72 hours. Give us a little time. Uh, we have a lot of attendees, so we'll be emailed to the, um, to the email you, you use to register this webinar. And this webinar is also recorded and the recording of this webinar and the slides will be emailed to you as well within 48 to 72 hours. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand over to my, oh, oh, actually, I missed this. <laughs> so today's um, quick agenda is Morgan is going to go through what's new in Learning Genie and followed by panel discussion and sharing. And then we will have a Q&A session. Given there are so many uh, attendees, um, so Q&A, if you have any questions, um, through the course of the webinar, please tap your questions in the Q&A box and we will be answering as we go. And we will also select certain number of questions to uh, read it out to the um, panelists to answer at the end of the um, uh, webinar, okay? All right, um, with that, I'm gonna pass over to my team member, Morgan. She's going to give you a quick overview of what's new in Learning Genie. Thanks, Lala. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming in today. I'm Morgan. Um, I'm also, I am part of the education partnership team here at Learning Genie, and I was also a former preschool teacher out here in California. I'm so excited for you all to be here as well as our panelists. I'm going to um, go over our all-in-one tool, Learning Genie's tool, as well as go over some new updates in Learning Genie. Uh, this has definitely been an interesting year, but we are all very resilient individuals and I'm very excited for next year. So let's get started. 
So how is Learning Genie supporting early learning under COVID? So we are an all-in-one tool for families and educators to partner together about children's learning. You can schedule and facilitate virtual classroom events, you can communicate with families freely without language barriers. So we offer over a hundred different languages for families to have their parent Learning Genie app translated into. You can share activities and lesson plans with families, as well as track at home learning if you are doing distance learning at this time. And we do have measurable data dashboards for each of our modules as well. So going into our different modules, so there are four main components in Learning Genie. We have our portfolios and assessment tool, typically for um, the DRDP 2015 framework. And this tool enables easy organization of notes and collaboration between staff to produce quality observations. So that's what we'll be you know, going over today. Um, we have our family engagement tool that enables two-way communication between teachers and uh, parents with over 100 different languages for their parent app to be translated into. Staff can share educational videos and video books as well as create virtual events and activities with families. Our digital health card and contactless attendance tool. The daily health card is used for data-driven decision-making to create and provide timely health tracking during the pandemic. And our attendance tool is a contactless sign-in that can be used for tracking on-site and hybrid learning. Our in-kind module is also known as that non-federal match for Head Start agencies and schools. It's a paperless collection of in-kind that reduces potential errors and also encourages more in-kind submissions from families and volunteers who come into school. So Learning Genie, uh, each of our modules have a dashboard and Learning Genie's dashboard provides data-driven methodology to guide agencies for continuous quality improvements. So moving in to our new updates. So for our portfolios module, you can collect at-home observations from families now. So if you have families that are doing distance learning, they can select that home observation button and contribute notes. And those notes will be saved automatically as a draft from parents. You'll see here, draft from parents into that child's digital portfolio for then teachers to go in and edit and add in the designated measures for that observation. So those drafts will be green. We do have a new um, events feature that you might be familiar with if you're using our family engagement tool. Uh, families can schedule in virtual classroom events and parents can RSVP to these uh, virtual classroom events or any events you create at your school. Families can also sign the event that they're uh, going, if it's a virtual classroom event, they can sign off and you can track that attendance to those virtual events. Um, so there is a remote sign-in signature. Staff can also set reoccurring events. So here's that virtual attendance sheet you can track. So we have, um, you can create different PDFs for each event and track how many families RSVP'd. Um, you can see their signatures will be attached to uh, those virtual events if they signed in from their uh, parent app. So you can download these attendance sheets for each event you create. For learning media channels, you can also now create questionnaires for families. So this is going to be coming out soon. Um, and, or it is already out actually. So you can, your admin can add in questionnaires after videos. They will prompt families after they watch a video, different questionnaires that you can create. You can ask open-ended questions to check for comprehension from families or ask um, what they're, how they like that video. So you can currently do this. And it shows an encouraging message to families after submitting that record, uh, after answering that question. So that's it for our updates for today. You can look forward to uh, those how-to step-by-step guides on our YouTube channel on Learning Genie. So in, on YouTube, you can search Learning Genie and we'll have those videos out soon on how to do these different 
uh, updates. So I'm going to now pass the mic over to Jerry to get us started. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. So I'm going to go ahead and I have the honor of introducing all of our panelists today. Um, so today they'll be sharing a lot of their personal stories and practices that were working during the year um, or maybe not working uh, when it comes to family engagement and collecting observations for whatever rating system that you guys are using for your students. Um, so if you have any questions during our discussion, uh, please feel free to put all of those, as Lala said, into the uh, Q&A box. Um, if you have tips of your own, please feel to share those into the chat. Uh, don't forget to change the setting to um, send to panelists and attendees, just so everyone can kind of take a look at, at what your suggestion is. Um, it's just super helpful for everyone to kind of collaborate on that. And the last thing is just to remember to be positive and really supportive. Again, they're sharing kind of their personal stories from their agency. So what worked for them uh, might be different for you. So just remember to be um, respectful in our chat and Q&A. So I'm gonna go ahead and take let the panelists take the stage for a bit. Uh, we're gonna start with Angelica. So for all our panelists, if you wanna just give us um, an introduction to you, the role that you have at your school and a little bit about how you guys are operating right now, if it's distance learning or blended. Uh, so Angelica, if you wanna kick us off here. Hey everyone, my name is Angelica. I work at Long Beach City College Child Development Center. Uh, we are a lab school, uh, which means that we have students, um, adult students that come. Uh, right now, uh, they are in distance learning, so they're navigating this with us as well. I am a child development teacher, and I work in the part-day preschool class, so my classroom is a mixed-age class uh, with children from three to five years old, and uh, currently, we're doing a hybrid um, model where uh, some children choose to go in person, uh, some children uh, choose to stay distance learning, and then we have a couple of children who are doing distance and uh, in-person learning as well. Perfect, thank you. Liz, if you wanna go next. Hello, my name's Liz, and I'm actually a teacher for Lindsay Unified School District. And currently we are doing distance learning, but at, I think they let us know that uh, starting January 12th, we are gonna start the hybrid and we are gonna be doing both. So that means parents get to choose either in person or distance learning. And I am currently AM and PM session as well. So that's uh, the bright side, it's good. So distance learning, it has been very challenging. So yes, uh, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Sure, if you wanna go as well. Yeah, so my name is Sherher. Um, I work for Set a Head Start. I, my role is an education coordinator. Um, in our program, we have um, Early Head Start, we have a preschool and also home base. And so um, we've been using Learning Genie since I believe probably about 2016. Um, currently we have about 170 teachers um, and about 1400 students um, that are all doing virtual learning. So um, I'm so glad to be a part of this panel. Thank you. All right. And then Jennifer. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Osalvo, and I'm a child development coordinator with the Sacramento City Unified School District. We have preschool programs in both Head Start and state funded programs, and we serve three to five year olds. We have 42 teachers at 33 different school sites, and they are all doing distance learning. So that for most of our teachers includes doing Zoom meetings like this, except for it's not a webinar, but having virtual meetings with their classes, with their students. Perfect. All right, so um, we're actually gonna get back to these shared resources later, um, but let's kind of jump right in here. So um, the first thing I, I kind of wanna ask is just, you know, a lot of you just turned in the DRDP ratings this past week. Um, and that's probably the same for a lot of people in our audience. Um, so what did that look like? What were kind of the challenges in getting that done this year? Uh, does anybody particularly want to start? Angelica, do you want to start? Because <laughs> we were talking about it earlier. Sure. Uh, I'll start off with the positive. The positive was there were uh, less measures to do. 
<laughs> so I thought that that was exciting. Uh, my colleagues as well. Uh, the challenges were obviously, um, we measure a lot of the children's learning in person. Uh, you know, you're right there. Uh, and a lot of it was extending the language. Uh, so we know as educators, uh, this is what we're trained to do. This is our job. So we know what to look for and how to look for it. We know what questions we can ask. And uh, when we're doing a Zoom meeting, it's very difficult sometimes to get uh, that critical thinking uh, knowledge or those questions out when there's so many children that are shouting out at the same time or, you know, there's parents who are kind of saying, hey, say this, this is the answer. So that was kind of the most difficult where, um, you know, gaining uh, that knowledge that the children have in a setting that's not the classroom when we're, where it's not super organic as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, but it's doable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get into the details. Doable. <laughs> awesome. Um, sure. Do you want to go next? Yes. So um, for our program, I think that one of the challenges is, you know, finding ways on how to um, complete the DRDP, right? And so with those families who we may have a harder time to connect with, right? And so, um, you know, so just thinking of ways um, on how to complete those portfolios and how to complete those anecdotal notes. And so we do have a lot of different, um, you know, resources in how to help us complete those, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the whole point, um, or, or maybe like um, a good thing to do is maybe to stay connected somehow, whether it's through um, email, constant, you know, like calling, um, texting, FaceTiming, whatever works, right? Just mm -hmm. connecting with those families and even reaching, um, doing a little bit more beyond than what we would do normally. Um, such as maybe dropping off um, kits, you know, for those um, specific families who are having those challenges. And so I think that by doing that um, and um, practicing that, I think that as we go through this next, you know, part and collect down at Odos, um, it will be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, did you have something to add as well from your program? No, I, I'll just echo what Angelica said about um, just working with the families and trying to get as much information as you can from the Zoom meetings. And then even what Cher said about designing specific activities for families to do so that they could take the picture of the mm -hmm. child doing that activity or the video. So we've, we've received a few videos and teachers are so excited when they see a video in Learning Genie from their parents saying, hey, look at the kid, look at my child doing this. Yeah. And those are great. Yeah, how are you kind of able to encourage that? I mean, we're going to get into this a lot with um, just the general communication, but are you also just like like encouraging families, like sh able to share that with other families that like, hey, like this person's like sharing videos. Are, are, you, are you doing something like that just to kind of make it a whole community sharing? Yes, what we've done is after a, a parent puts, um, puts in a message, either a video or a picture of the child's work or the child doing something, we try to make sure we do a response after every single one to encourage them to keep doing that. Oh, great work, keep it up. Love to see more pictures. And towards the end of every Zoom call, I hear teachers say, make sure that you take pictures, parents of the child doing this, or send me a video, it's great to see. And then sometimes during their Zoom calls, during the next Zoom call, they'll share that photo. Like, oh, look, this parent sent me this photo so they can be showcased in the next classroom. Yeah, that's amazing. And Liz, did you have anything to add just as far as unique challenges at your program? Yes, well, we have a lot of working parents and just getting them on Zoom was very challenging. And yes, getting those observations, yes, was challenging and just finding the ways of how and just for our um, agency was, how are we gonna get them? What apps are we gonna utilize? So mm -hmm. that's how we, trying to get them. And even what Cher was saying was just trying to get those connections of call-ins and trying to get as much as those connections with those parents. And yes, it was challenging. Yeah. But <laughs> yes, but you know what? It was a positive note only because we got to get familiar and was able to get, um, get getting to know the family was very important. So we got to know everybody and that mm -hmm. was a positive note. So yeah. yes. 
Yeah, that is great. Challenging, but positive. Yeah, that's like a great way to look at it. I feel like, like, yeah, when you 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 usually just hear the parents when they drop off or pick up at the end of the day. So it's kind of nice to have that one on one. It's like a parent teacher conference like every, yeah. every day. Yes, every day, <laughs> every day. Yes. And, and even getting the, the, even getting those observations. Yes. Printing out to what they sent us. I, that's what I did was printing out whatever they sent us. I would show it on zoom. Look what your friends did. Look. So it was just like incentives and yes, getting yeah. that like for just sending stuff back. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So you had mentioned that you are doing fully distance, but you're going to go back to the classroom. Angelica, you're doing a blend already. Um, How are you kind of managing the two different learning environments for the students? Um, what, What kind of goes into that planning? We have a teacher, an educator, who's actually kind of the lead distance learner, uh, distance learning educator. So she's, um, kind of in charge of that area. And so then I just come in and help support her. Uh, So for example, today, right before this panel, um, I was in a Zoom with her and um, she plans everything, but I just kind of help support as well. Um, And I'm more the in-person planner. So we tried to do kind of a synchronous thing, but obviously that wasn't going to (laughs) work because we found out. Uh, But again, it's a lot of trial and error during this time. Uh, So we just kind of do our own thing, but we also meet as well. So we have Zooms or we email, hey, you know, I noticed this person hasn't been attending. Can you follow up with them? Or uh, the children who are doing hybrids, like they'll give me updates and they'll say, you know, I did this with Miss Jennifer. And then I ask her, oh, you know, I heard about your activity. It was really cool. Or uh, I extended it into the classroom as well uh, you know so we're kind of working in conjunction uh, mm-hmm. and really trying to do what we did in person which was collaborate and communicate with each other on the daily but now it has to be virtual right are you guys all I mean like I'm, I'm pretty sure this is kind of a, a concern across the board is just how you're going to con- deliver consistency in the program um, is there anything you guys are doing specifically to kind of address that um, between distance learners versus people who come into the classroom? Um, or, or are you just kind of doing everything individualistic? Um, does anyone have any ideas on that? Nope, still planning. <laughs> and Liz, since you're in the planning stage, what are you kind of like in your mind, like what are, what are the concerns that you have as you guys go back into the classroom in January? I already have a schedule and my schedule is we are a three, um, three hour program, but for the meantime, we are going to be a two hour program and I am going to be doing whole group with my in-person, but I am also going to be doing um, whole group with the uh, distance learners at the same time. Then once the in-person um, learners leave, then I will be doing small groups later on with the distance learners. So it it is gonna be challenging where I'm like, oh my God, because right now with uh, my distance learners, I do do a lot of slides. So they're gonna be used to slides and I'm like, am I gonna have time? That's why I'm like, what am I gonna do? So what I've been doing, um, I've been creating slides, but I've also been getting resources from I don't know if you guys know about the Bitmoji um, for pre-K and kindergarten classrooms. That is a great um, resource. It's on on Facebook. So if I were you, I'd get on the ball and request them. But yes, um, they're great on um, slides. So um, it's very, very good. So yes, I think it's going to be challenging, but it's manageable. And I'm going to be the one um, doing them. But I do have extra staff and support in my learning environment. So yes, I'm going to need all of their support. So yes, oh, good. that's how we are going to do it. Doing yeah. it at the same time. But yes, <laughs> doable. <Nice. laughs> Yeah, I I feel like anyone who has like the support from other teachers, I think that's something that someone from the audience actually suggested as, um, as like as a tip that they were doing at their schools, if they do have an assistant teacher in the classroom, like one person can be teaching one person can be giving, or like taking the rating, like like the observations down. And so any support that you have is gold, I feel like at this point. Um, Sure. And Jennifer, did you guys have like something similar in in your um, in your program, just as far as um, how you're setting up your classroom, as is, is there help that you have, uh, just as far as that? Uh, yeah, so um, for us, you know, uh, we still want to somehow 
um, continue, you know, being consistent with um, schedules and routines, right? So like, just like in the classrooms, we are still trying to implement that virtually. And so, you know, encouraging teachers to do the visual um, schedule boards, right? Um, doing those one-to-one um, -one meetings on Zoom and also the group learning. So there's some um, socialization there within the group as well. And so just trying to continue that um, as we move through this virtual learning um, and kind of just, you know, doing something that's kind of familiar to when they were back in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything to add, Jennifer? Um, yes, we also have instructional aides that participate in the classroom Zooms. And usually right after the classroom Zoom ends, the aid and teacher get together and they talk about what observations they saw, because usually that's what the aid is doing during, um, sometimes during the Zoom is they're making those observations to see what the children said and, and what happened. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Cool, so let's get more into the details of how you guys are communicating because I think that is one of the biggest things that has changed um, for everyone. Um, it's just how you're, like you guys mentioned already, just how you're reaching parents. You're using multiple different platforms to get to them, email, text, Learning Genie, if it's that. But um, let's talk a little bit about how you guys are using Learning Genie or other tools that are have been helpful in, in reaching parents. Uh, does, who wants to start on that one? Sure, you were you were kind of talking about it already. Do you want to start on it? Um, yeah, so, you know, I think that the most important thing to kind of, you know, think about going, um, you know, doing this and, and reaching success is maybe just being a little bit more creative, right? Being creative in ways on how you can reach the families. And so for our program, we do, um, you know, we do use the Learning Genie emails. We do that. We encourage parents to communicate with us through that. Um, you know, like I said, texting, emailing, um, FaceTiming, whatever is most convenient for parents. But then on top of that, we are also sending home um, activity packets, right? And so we send home um, the Measure Me Kit, which we can I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, we send home uh, weekly lesson plans with materials included with it. Um, and also um, surprise me bags. And so that's just a little bit of a little fun thing where they can kind of do and add to their weekly um, activities. And so um, I think if we become creative in ways of, of reaching to, out to those parents and staying connected, I think that, you know, maybe the parents are more willing um, to come on Zoom and join us and send us feedback and pictures and photos and stuff, so. Yeah, definitely. And Angelica, did you want to weigh in here? Yeah, to mirror a little bit about what Cher was saying, uh, creativity definitely uh, plays a huge role. I think as uh, educators in general, we are resourceful people. Uh, you know, we can do a lot with, li with a little. And so I feel that now is a time where, you know, that's kind of what is happening. We have very limited resources or families have limited resources. So kind of thinking out of the box and meeting families where they are too. I think that it's very important, you know. Uh, we, again, are resourceful and we can move on, but we also have to remember we are going through a pandemic. So meeting families where they are and children and also meeting ourselves as a team, like how can we collaborate? You know, we're maybe used to doing such big things and on a grand scale, but we've got to scale it down. We've got to personalize it. So again, as Cher said, following up maybe with a phone call or a text message, a quick email, finding ways to do that. You know, uh, Learning Genie has been really great as far as for staff to get to know what are you doing? What measures are you meeting? Oh, okay, you know what? Then I have an activity for this and helping plan that out and then sending that to the family. So that's been a really great way also for us to plan as a team where we can see what measures we need to meet for the DRDP and then following that up with activities and sending that out to families and getting it to them. So then we on our side can measure and use that for our DRDP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jennifer, do you want to add anything or did it was more or less the same? Um, yeah, the same things like Cher said, when I've seen teachers give out materials for all of the students where they all have the same materials or the same activity to do during their Zoom classroom, it's been more successful because all the kids have the materials and they can see their teacher do it at the same time and, and do it as a class. Mm -hmm. And just yeah. same stuff. Yeah, Liz, did you, do you have anything to add before we move on? 
Um, yes, we, we also give out activity packets and it follows along with either the theme that we're focusing on um, the certain weeks. And yes, they do share it. They sent it back. Um, and sometimes even on Zoom, they're working on it and they share it. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice to see what they're, um, they're doing at that time. Yeah. Um, also, um, um, as I think Cher was saying um, about the phone calls, it's parents' preference. We all always ask them what they'd like because some of the parents do not like either phone calls. They're now more right. about the taxis. <laughs> okay, let's send them a text how they're doing. Um, so it, it all depends. And I've been using a lot of the Learning Genie. I have all of my parents on board of Learning Genie. So I do send all the parents messages on Learning Genie. So if I have something to share with them, if I have conferences coming up, here they are, Learning Genie. But I do send them like a, a reminder or something if whatever their preference are is, if it's an email, text or phone call, I still um, do it weekly. Yeah. Okay. So you do have like a little bit of a schedule. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Well, so did you send out like a, a survey or something to get an idea of what, how parents want to receive this information? Um, it... At the beginning of the year, when um, the learner enrolls, we have inductions, which is like a meet and greet. And we do ask the parents what their preference is. And we write it down and we're like, okay, do you prefer yeah. a phone call, email? What would you like? Yeah. So that's how it is, but we do have everybody on Learning Genie. Oh, good. Okay, that's good. How how is everyone staying organized with between phone calls, texts, emails, Learning Genie, all the different forms of communication? How are you kind of organizing this? Is there like a, a set schedule that you have personally for yourself to be able to manage all this? I see Angelica, you unmuted. Yeah, I definitely have a planner now. I'm not. I. <laughs> I'm organized, but I never used a planner. And now I rely on my planner heavily. Uh, and having that schedule, I think as just humans, we thrive on routine and we like our things to be the same, especially now during this time where there's so much uncertainty happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we like our routine. So for example, if you send out an email every Monday morning, then keep it every Monday morning, you know, because change sometimes uh, can create a little bit of chaos. And so having those phone calls, again, like Liz mentioned, or, you know, whatever it is you are doing, just keeping that consistency and keeping your routine as much as possible, even if children are are home or families are home, you still want to make sure to give them that comfort. They want to know what's coming and they want to know that it's something uh, that they can rely on. And so keeping the organization, definitely having a schedule, uh, having reminders that set you up. So I have reminders on my computer. I have reminders on my phone. I write them down. Uh, so definitely having a system that works for you and it's going to look different for everyone, but whatever works for you. And as long as you can keep it together, then uh, you can share that with everyone else. Mm -hmm. Sure. Did you want to add to that? Yeah. So um, I just wanted to share that um, in our agency, we we um, developed a like a tracking planning sheet, sort of like um, for the teachers to actually, you know, plan um, which family, which children they're going to meet with during that week. Um, and then also track, right, track of whether they met that parent, regardless of what kind of communication they had. Um, so just tracking, um, you know, those things um, will kind of help the teacher stay organized. Like what Angelica says, staying organized is the key. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so the next question that I have for you guys um, revolves around how you guys are doing your assessments back to that. Um, how are you going into this and making sure that you have useful assessments that you can actually report, like whether that be for your DRDP or for um, parent conferences or whatever it may be, are you getting parents involved in that as well? Or, or how, are you, how is that being managed now? Uh, for our agency, we uh, set goals with families. So our first uh, family conference is usually in the fall. And so we ask them what the goals are for their children or in my classroom, for example, children have the opportunity, some children have the opportunity to be there two years. So I already knew some children from last year. So I have these ongoing goals for them. Um, so I'm working towards those goals. So on the Zooms, I would look for specific things. Let's say I was working on language. Uh, you know, I would look for the child to be 
extended vocabulary or what are their conversations like? What are their answers like when I'm asking them questions? So those are things that I would be looking for and then marking down on my notes um, or at the end, if I recorded the Zoom, I would go back and look at my Zoom and listen again um, or either rely on my uh, co-teacher, my another educator that was there taking notes and say like, hey, you know, did you hear Angelica say something? Or what did she say? I didn't quite get that. Uh, so having those goals and those markers and then making families uh, participant and asking them, hey, have you seen this? A lot of the families, of course, they want what's best for the child and they want them to learn. So asking them to be actively participating and saying, you know, when you guys are cooking, can you have them count how many eggs you're using or have them set the table and count the spoon? So giving them little tips that we do in the classroom naturally. Uh, parents don't really know how to do that or don't know the that they have the ability to do that. So giving them those little tips and then using those in our conference and uh, again, like uh, Morgan was mentioning, you know, having the ability for them to share those pictures with us and then they themselves writing us little notes like, hey, you know, this, my child did this and they weren't able to do it. And so they were sharing these things inadvertently without knowing. And so then us going back and saying, wow, that's a measure that they met. Then, you know, you can look out for this in the future. And so having that uh, conversation with them. Mm. Is that the same for, for what you at the rest of you are doing as well? You have anything you can you can open yourself and start talking. Um, yes, we we have an individual learning plan for each learner, and um, basically we have two goals that we have for the learners, and we also ask the parent what their goal is for their child in the classroom. But for right now, since we're not in the class, um, we ask them what they feel they um, their goal is for their child right now for distance learning. And once they met their goal, then we go ahead and add a different goal for them. So mm -hmm. it's like Angelica said, you know, we try to find those uh, different goals and um, try to ask them those open-ended questions. So, you know, we, we try to um, get a lot of lessons and slides according to what we need. So it's, we try our hardest and I know it's very challenging, but we can do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, all of you had mentioned a little bit about like you are dealing with different types of parents, right? Like if they're working, if um, like there's other reasons why they, they aren't equipped to be able to deliver the curriculum. Um, is there anything specific that you guys are doing to support those who don't have like the same like resources at home or time if that's the issue? Um, what are you guys doing to reach out to them specifically? Our district was fortunate enough to be able to offer Chromebooks for each of our preschoolers. So if a family did not have the technology to sign up for Zoom or for Learning Genie, we were able to lend them a Chromebook this school year. And um, that has helped a lot. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes. Does anyone else want to add? Go ahead, Liz. Yes, um, same thing, um, like Jennifer, um, we were fortunate enough with Lindsay Unified that um, all of our preschool learners got um, iPads. And if we have a community Wi-Fi, if also during the meet and greet or called inductions, if we asked the parent if they didn't have um, Wi-Fi, they were able to get the community Wi-Fi as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was also very important for them yeah. to yeah. have. All right, let's get, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Angelica, go. Yeah. We partnered up with our health department. So Long Beach has its own health department. We're part of LA County, but we have our own health department. So they, uh, with their funds, they were able to um, send backpacks full of uh, paper and markers and uh, other materials that children can use. And then we've also partnered up with other community um resources that again have given us uh, materials to give to the family. So we've been able to either mail them. And then before the stay at home order happened, uh, we were able to have them picked up at school uh, before like pre pandemic, uh, and then also uh, send it again via mail. And then uh, we also applied for grants. So that's also something that a lot of uh, either um, programs in the community have done because they haven't been able to do their own outreach. So you're able to apply for grants and we've gotten books that way that we're able to send to children as well. So that's something that we have really relied on and are grateful for in our community. Yeah, that's great. And before I move on, I know Cher, you do something similar with sending materials home. Did you have anything else to add on that note? 
Um, yeah, so like the rest of um, the girls said, you know, like just, um, you know, like being, you know, like observing, sending those activity kids home, um, you know, like having parents choose what is the best method of communication um, and trying to work around that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So let's go into some of the fun stuff because I like a lot of you shared some of your specific activities. All of you have gone so creative. Um, I'm kind of putting these things together. And so I'm excited to share with our audience like what activities you actually sent out. Um, but before we go into that, what have you seen as like kind of the best stuff that people are re reacting to? Like what kind of engagements? Is it the books? Is it actual activities? What kind of things that are you seeing a lot more engagement from from the students and their families? For me, I think it's the music and movement. Like we, instead of sitting down like we are now, we'll, we'll all stand up and do freeze dance or some head, shoulders, knees and toes, a lot of music and movement and science activities. Mm -hmm. So those are usually have the parent right next to the child and they're doing this, the science experiment as a class. So I think those are the most successful ones that I've seen. Cool. Does anyone else wanna add before we? Well, the rest of you are actually gonna share some of the actual activities that you've done. So let me just actually pull that up now. Uh, let's see here. So let's, start with, sure, you had some really specific um, things that you've put out called the Measure Me Kits. Uh, so you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. So um, the name Measure Me um, actually was, and you know, like we talked about it within our leadership team, and we were actually looking for ways on how to measure the child, right? And so as um, a teacher for, you know, me being a teacher for so long, you know, I really had to think about, you know, like, how are we going to capture those certain skills that we're looking for um, to complete our DRDP, right? And so um, the idea came, you know, like from that, you know, and really thinking about, you know, like, how are we going to, you know, like, continue engaging the children in the activities and how can we also engage the parents during the process, right? So there was a lot of things that we had to look at, but um, from a teacher's perspective, right? So we really got to look at, you know, if you notice like on the top of these kits. So right now in our agency, we have um, 40 kits um, and they all are very different, right? And so they fall within like the different um, ELOF domains. And so it's colored. So the cards are actually colored on top, um, you know, like connecting see, yeah. to that domain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also um, there's the DRDP measures that's also listed up there as well. And so um, in the kit, um, of course it comes with materials. Um, and then this is the actual activity card, right? That you're seeing like the measure me kit number one. Um, and um, in the kit, it comes with materials like Legos, three, uh, two block play people, um, and two sheets of paper. And then on the other side, it just kind of shows, um, you know, the items to be returned back to um, our centers to get sanitized okay. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so they pick these up once a week. And so it gets assigned by the teacher, um, depending on what skill they want to practice or what skill they want to observe for or what goal the parents or the, um, you know, like, um, the teachers they all want to work on. And so where it says measure me directions, um, these are actually like, you know, like from a child's perspective, right? Like engage with me by reading the activity sheet and engage um, me in practicing the learning skills. Um, see me, right? See me doing the activity and take a picture, right? So it's telling almost like from a child's perspective to the parent. Mm -hmm. Um, email or text a picture to my teacher. Um, surprise me. Um, surprise me with an extra activity from the additional play, which is on the bottom of the card. And those are additional activities that they can do with the same materials. Very cool, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also um, the mystery or surprise bag that also comes within um, every week that they get. They can also, you know, like put them together as well and form extended play. Mm -hmm. um, and then know me, right? So let my teacher know about me during Zoom, tell my teacher how I'm doing. So this is kind of just ways on how they can like engage. Yeah. And then the middle part where it says to begin play in the middle of play and at the end of play, it kind of walks the parent through and how they can engage with the materials. So when they're playing with the children, they can kind of focus on this, you know, like at the beginning of play, allow your children to build, right? And in the middle of the play, you can do this. And so um, that's basically kind of like the layout of the activity cards. 
yeah, that's amazing. And then you had mm -hmm. this as well. Yeah. So um, this was actually, um, it actually came from one of one of um, the teachers. And so um, some teachers are actually doing this where they are forming questions before they're going into the Zoom to meet with the family. And so these are uh, specific questions that's relating to the kit. Mm -hmm. um, and they also jot down, you know, like the measures that it aligns with. Um, so after they take their notes and ask the questions, they can go into Learning Genie and kind of, you know, put those things in there. Mm -hmm. And cool. So, yeah. yeah. So for everybody in the audience, you are going to get a copy of these slides and the, and the recording so you can zoom in and see what exactly is on here. I know it's a little bit small and blurry, so you'll get more details after our meeting here. Uh, but thanks, sure. That was like actually like, like when we talked to uh, you guys a couple months ago, we're like, this is amazing. It makes it so organized and very clear for like what parents need to do. So that's thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so Liz is also going to share a couple things that she does in her classroom as well. So this is just um, an example of what we give our parents when we do inductions. And this is the schedule for my morning class. And we do separate them by their, um, they have their small groups and it is optional. But this is um, where, what times I have this, the whole group. And then we do take a break. That means they do stretching. And then from 8.45 to 9.05, they do whole group again. And then 10, 15 to 10, 30, they have their small groups again. Mm. And I cut it off. Of this. Oh, no worries. And then yeah. I do um, have my Zoom link um, on there for the parents to have. So I give them a copy. Um, if some of them request it, I send them to their email again. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can go on to the next slide. And this one, um, this one, I also give it to them only because it gives them more information about independent work options on the side where we do have um, Math Shelf. We utilize Math Shelf, our um, district for just a Math Shelf, and it's all about math. And that's how we are also able to get a lot of measures. Um, and Lexia, Lexia is all about literacy. And we also utilize um, uh, Seesaw. Seesaw, we utilize Seesaw a lot. So this is also another resource that we use for the parents as well. So it gives a little more information. Um, so this is also gives you the times. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, this is one of the activities that I have and upload on Seesaw. So as you can see, um, some of the learners go up there and then just move um, the little circles. But here they, they just circled according to what um, started with the letter J and they just upload it and it's all on the iPad that the um, district provided for them and it's very easy because it gives them the instructions and they're there and they're able to circle them. Mm -hmm. so yeah you, really you provided us with a lot of these really yes. cool. And here again these are things that I upload and the learners it's all about the um, the gumball yep. machine yeah and this this is a slide that I have on zoom and they tell me, you know, what number comes next. And they let me know. And I just put it on there and it, it appears. So yeah. it's very nice. What's the missing number? So we do a lot of math. Here's another seesaw activity um, where these were all the, the fruits were here. And then they had to um, put them into, separate them and sort them out into the green, yellow, red, and orange, purple. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, here is again turkey yeah, patterns and it was when we were gonna do um it was thanksgiving theme so it's very simple yep and very you know it was very nice so yeah, here's another measure <laughs> yeah tons of like just general right ideas. and i have a ton yeah, and some of the parents and i tell him you know you got it doesn't it doesn't have to be on the specific date that i sent it some parents send it later and it's mm -hmm. okay i said you work when you can it's okay because some of the parents are like oh my god I didn't send it I'm like that's fine it's okay as yeah. long as you get something back absolutely right. thank you for sharing all those again everyone will get those um like ideas for, as well and then Angelica has a few things that she wanted to share from her classroom um so you'll see this on on our slides when you get them but if you want to go into a couple of things that you did 
So for example, I mentioned that uh, we were a lab school. So that means that we work with practicum students. Uh, we still work with practicum students, even though we're at uh, distance learning because they're not allowed in the classroom. Uh, we do meetings virtually. So in order to meet those requirements, uh, we have them do activities uh, via Zoom. So this was my first time ever uh, doing that. So I just did that uh, two weeks ago where I had uh, my laptop open and then they facilitated an activity with me. So again, I can just pull up a lesson plan that's readily available in Learning Genie and show them to give them an idea because some of them have never worked in this field. So this can give them a quick idea about what to do and then we can work on it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you have. So this is their lesson plan and what it looks like. Perfect. And you also had some really great activities as well. So you can yes, go into so those we, a little. We partnered with uh, Little Libros, which is um, an independent uh, book company. And so we had the author read via Zoom. Uh, I shared it on Learning Genie for those children who are not in person, who are distant. So they were able to see the video. They were able to hear him as well. And then for the in-person children, um, we had an activity where they brought uh, ingredients and we made tortas uh, to support that. So uh, we talked about how a torta is just a sandwich and we all eat sandwiches. And so the children decided what they would bring and they uh, brought it with us. So that was part of an extension. And then in order to connect the distance learners, we offered them the opportunity to do that as well at home. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and, and so Angelica has a couple other ones here that you'll see in our, our slide deck um, later, but I definitely wanna leave some time for the Q&A. So I'm gonna invite Morgan and a couple of our other colleagues to, to come back here um, and get you some questions from the crowd. Okay, hello everyone. So for Liz, can you explain what Bitmoji is? Some of our audience was wondering what that means and what that is. Oh, okay. So. These are created slides and it's on Facebook. So if you're doing distance learning, um, they're like I said, created slides. So you don't have to go and create the slides and it's Bitmoji um, for preschool and kindergarten classrooms. So if you go onto Facebook, you can just go request, request them and it's there. That's where I get a lot of my slides. You just go and make a copy and um, but name it yourself. And then you can do a lot of adjustments however you want to um, put it. And if you have like a Bitmoji on there, um, you can just add your Bitmoji. But yes, <laughs> I use a lot of these Bitmoji uh, for pre-K pre and kindergarten classrooms. Yes. Liz, do you mean putting yes. it into the chat? Like just the, wait, so. I, I think I already add, oh, I added it on the questions, but yes, I'll put it on there right now. Perfect. Yes, I will. Okay, another question we had. So this would could be a question for all of our panelists. There was a question asking, how do parents know what they are observing is a measurable outcome? Are they being trained in using the DRDP, DRDP tool or is there a more simplified guidance? How are you doing this? I think that this is where that communication with families comes in. Uh, just simply talking to the families or to the parent and asking them how their child is doing, what they're playing. And when you're talking about the activity, uh, you can ask them, did they say, you know, did they count from one through 10 uh, or giving them those tips? It's, you know, you can pretend that your parents are your students uh, and say, you know, when you're counting, if you have Legos, try to see if they can group all the green Legos together. Try to see if they can uh, discriminate between uh, small and extra large or, you know, big, medium, small. Uh, so giving them those tips and opening that communication to them, uh, then it, it's on you as the educator to know like, okay, that's a measure. Uh, the parents don't really know about DRDP unless they're in education, but then that's where that communication comes in and you guys can work together to meet those goals as Liz was saying earlier, to kind of meet those goals and then create a new one for the, the children. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, did you have anything to add in with that? Or... Um, to add, I've, I've heard my teachers or seen some messages from my teachers to parents saying like, can you take a video of the child doing the writing, like asking for more specific items because the teacher wanted to see how the child was gripping the writing utensil. So um, just like Angelica said, to be specific with and keeping communication open with parents. 
Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you definitely do. Teachers need to help guide parents in that aspect. Lala, did you want to um, have any other specific questions that you noticed from the Q&A? Oh, I think you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. We have some great questions. Hopefully we can answer all of them. Um, I have a couple. So um, um, basically, we're, we're not a distance learning center. However, what recommendations can you give me to include those children who are chronically absent and hinders DRDP observations? Any one of you would like to comment on that? Uh, when we helped use helped customers upload to DRDP online, uh, a lot of measures were um, were not able to be observed, unable to observe, unable to rate, and then we see that's a common challenge, um, especially during this uh, period. So, what are your approach on that part? Uh, for us, it's uh, following up with families and um, some of them don't have the access to it or don't have the time if we have working families. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to connect during the day and obviously we're not working at night, uh, but following up with them at times that's convenient for them. And sometimes that's going to look like a really a five minute meeting or sometimes it's going to look like a text or it's going to look like an email, uh, but trying to follow up with them and then also, some of the things, they're just going to be unable to rate. You know, you can't bring a child onto the screen. So, unfortunately, it's going to have to be an unable to rate. But definitely, on your part, just trying and following up with the family and knowing, like, hey, we're still here. Let's follow up. Let's talk. Uh, so, definitely keeping that communication open and know, letting them know that you're there for them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, we also have um, actually, um, um, uh, we this is the last webinar. Actually, in the previous uh, webinars, we actually have uh, home visiting programs and the uh, SR programs and the family service staff, and uh, they shared their tips on how they actually do whatever it takes to deliver these resources to the families. And they take two hours to get to a family to make sure they get in touch. And uh, so those are um, a lot of of, um, uh, educators and staff do above and beyond to really um, try to engage all the families and uh, uh, unfortunately that that uh, there is that equally gap there um, some don't have resources for um, technology and all that kind of stuff there's another one that say when you send activities for children to do at the same time on Zoom, how do you individualize if you have the three to five year old? <laughs> you have any tips on that part of observation? <laughs> um, this is what I do. Um, I have, um, I usually have little icons here that raise your hand here oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we we take turns we do take turns and let's see what whoever i need as far as observations i tell him let's see who i'm gonna call and let's unmute so i use a lot of icons here and uh, we take turns speaking i don't know if you can see them right here so yes this is how we do it <laughs> So if I need certain learners as observations, then yes, I'm going to use icons and I let them know beforehand. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to call um, some friends and then they're going to speak. So yes, we take turns speaking and we raise our quiet hand and we let them unmute. But yes, um, icons. We have codes of cooperation and that means these are included in there too. Um, codes of cooperation are like rules. So we call them codes of cooperation. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we did have quite a number of questions actually talk, uh, asking about engaging earlier Head Start, I mean, uh, zero to three year old or early Head Start children or home visiting. Any of the panelists that serve the children that's below three year old? So with my two teachers that work with infants and toddlers, they have very short Zoom meetings and the parents are right there. And most of it is uh, music and movement. And some um, they try to do, 
a, a different activity every day of the week and I forget what they do, but um, they've done things where um, the parents have the materials at home. I remember one science experiment was they had a cup of water and then they were dropping coins into the cup to see how many coins it would take to make the water overflow. But their Zoom meetings are a lot shorter than the preschooler ones. I see, thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, we actually have the previous um, webinars has uh, more um, panelists actually uh, on the uh, home-based programs and uh, they also partner a lot with the family service, family engagement staff from the early Head Start program. Uh, feel free to go to, if you missed any of those webinars, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the recording. You might be able to find some great tips from there as well. We are running out of time today. Uh, on, uh, on answering all the questions. I do want to ask my colleague, Stephanie is here too. Stephanie, do you have any questions you, you would like to ask live? We're all working on these questions to filter through. Uh, yes, so one of them where I, I know there's like a, a common um, a theme here that it's sometimes really, really hard for parents to understand how important it is for them to participate. Um, I know we don't want to make them feel like we're, you know, we're just kind of checking on not checking in on them and, and they end up actually, you know, not participating from that. Um, so I think sometimes it's just that communication. I've been seeing that a lot. If you do have a, a good communication with your families, they're more likely going to be able to um, want to, you know, participate than just checking in when they're not doing, you know, uh, uh, quote unquote, the work part. Oh. Perfect. I think we're, did, Lala, did you have any other questions that you wanted to ask? I think we're coming we're close to time. time. <laughs> yeah, there's just so much. I, I feel like we're, we're definitely going to keep looking through the Q&A. And if there's anything um, that is a common question, we'll, we'll share it definitely to everybody in the audience and, um, and to our panelists as well. Um, I know a lot of our uh, audience also submitted tips that they've been doing. So these will all be in those slides as well. Um, a lot of it we covered, some of it's new, um, just making short and easy appearance or just like the, the length of the time that you, you give them for the activities, um, doing things hands-on. If you can't provide the materials, make sure you can find it around the house. There's a lot of really great tips that all of you have submitted here. So you'll get those slides after our session. Um, so I, I think that's kind of it. I mean, I, let's wrap up with a little bit of like a, a, a lesson learned from the year. So I'm gonna go to each panelist. If you wanna share kind of your one big tip that you're gonna take into 2021. Uh, Liz, let's start with you. Ah, well, I learned that we have to be very flexible. Um, this year has been, there has been a lot of challenges and I know that 2021 is gonna be better. And I know that, yes, there's gonna be changes, but I know we can do it. There, that's what I always say to myself, we can do it. <laughs> we are educators and I know we can find resources. They're out there. Like I said, they are out there. And if we don't have them here in our classroom, we will find them, we will. <laughs> so yes, let's be happy. <laughs> Love that. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, you want to go next? Aside from flexibility, I guess um, just being open to whatever, <laughs> whatever new change comes, since it feels like new news is coming up and changes are coming all the time, just being open to whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Angelica, you want to go? Sure. Uh, again, like Jennifer said, aside from flexibility, which we need a lot of, I think just patience, patience with yourself. Uh, because again, uh, we put a lot of ourselves out there. We give a lot of ourselves to the families and the children we work with. So patience with yourself, patience with uh, the children and the families, and then all the news and changes that are coming up all the time. Uh, so yeah, just taking care of yourself and, and being flexible. Yep. Thanks. And then Cheryl, I'll let you close us out here. 
Yeah, I would say that, you know, something to remember is no matter the circumstance, we always have to remember to meet, um, you know, the parents' needs and where the children are at um, and don't expect them to meet our expectations. Yeah, that's great. I think, yeah, uh, that's so helpful. Um, thank you all of you for joining us and sharing all of your practices, tips, and kind of just positivity all around. I, I think it's going to be so helpful just for other teachers to hear from you. And now our teachers have heard from each other in the chat as well. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us in the audience. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out to us. If there's topics you want covered in the future, um, please send them our way. We'd love to continue to creating these for you as a resource. Um, but until then, we will see you next time. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye.